Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia the Redhead, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We are so happy to be with you today. We are going to be talking about sister wives. We are going back into the Akashic Brown <laughs> records. We are going straight into season five, episode one. Yes. We're going to be talking about money and credit Dead. and Robin building Ooh. fires in trailers. Girl, Girl, we have so much to talk about. Love it. But before we get into it, let us remind you to please... Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm -hmm. We are specifically stupid. We're stupid totally. people. We're dumb. And we're unapologetic. Those yeah. are the worst kind. <laughs> so if you're a self you might want to find yourself another dumpster. But if you're ready to get into the coins with mm. us, welcome to this one. Yeah. And if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. Yes. So much good content there. <laughs> for yes. sure. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, how you I... doing? You look beautiful today. Mm -hmm. Please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly everything you do really does help us yeah. to grow and we're growing so slowly on YouTube. So, so we need your help. We are asking specifically Please. for your help. Do all of those things and thank you in advance. Thank you. Now there is a little bit of Sister Wives gossy gossip. It's not gossip, it's a fact. Yeah. Janelle Brown yeah. has purchased a piece of land in North Carolina. Uh -huh. She spent 289 thousand dollars wow it is designated for agricultural use but in north carolina you can also have a homestead sure so she could put her casita right on it honey maybe she is and have a flower farm and do the whole nine yards which is great i guess it's her name and also maddie and caleb's mm, name interesting so maybe a family plot yes or maybe like a part-time home maybe she's going to be a snowbird type of thing i'm not sure all i know is that too many tacos tony padrone on his Patreon with McKelty Ugh. was the one who divulged that Janelle is already living in North Carolina. Oh, interesting. And we know that McKelty is also moving to North Carolina as oh. well. You didn't know no, this? No, I didn't know this. I guess we didn't talk about it last Maybe week. Maybe we didn't. Maybe you thought yeah, you did. Yeah, she's moving to North Carolina. And on her Patreon, she said, I need to get away from the drama. Oh. And I think she said it on the heels of saying that she moved close to Christine when Christine left Cody because they wanted to be a support. Uh -huh. But now Christine has all the support that she needs and we need to get away from this motherfucker drama so is she referencing drama as in christine and david i don't know or i think so kind of actually oh my god unless it's drama around robin and cody yeah because as we know cody didn't call her for her birthday right and we all wonder like how's cody treating mckelty who was kind of the last one standing mm -hmm. trying to stay in his good graces but after last season like how is he treating her well maybe he's treating her like shit probably and maybe she's ready to go. Maybe. I mean, that's great. Maybe you finally woke up to your dad being a total piece of shit. Yeah, like the rest of us. I mean, hello. We've all have, have been eyes. knowing. Yeah. So Janelle is apparently already living in North Carolina. Well, good for her. And I was reading on the subreddit. And now this is just complete conjecture. I am not stating it as fact. We're not trying to spread misinformation. We're just banding about ideas, things that might have happened. Yeah. But someone was saying on the subreddit, that Janelle, either Janelle or Janelle and Cody were the beneficiaries of Garrison's military life insurance policy to the tune of $500,000. Whoa. <clears throat> Somebody else dropped beneath that comment and said that Cody was trying to fight Janelle for his share of that money. Somebody else dropped in and said, how the fuck do you know that? Please don't be saying things that are not actually happening in this family because somebody's going to take it and start broadcasting it. Like us. Talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it did get me wondering, like Garrison probably did put his mom as his beneficiary. Of course he did, yeah. He didn't have a wife. I don't even think he had a girlfriend. Oh. And so maybe some of that money is what helped her to purchase a place where she can finally live, which I think Garrison would have really, really wanted of to do. Of course. That's really sweet. Mm -hmm. And if Cody is really being that big of a piece of shit and trying mm -hmm. to fight Janelle for it, then fuck 
It's pretty cut and dry. Like whoever the beneficiary is, is the one that gets the money. But like if he had Cody and Janelle as the beneficiary, Mm. I would be, I hope not. Yikes. I hope not. But I mean, we're just talking about facts that have not been um, entered into evidence. Yeah. This is just what I saw on Reddit. So don't come at me, bro. I'm just trying to share what I know. But Janelle is in North Carolina. I think she got 189 acres wow or 180 or 160 acres that's great for 289 that's awesome maybe we should we should go to north carolina (laughs) we should start a home you want to go live there (laughs) we should start a cult (laughs) we'd be great at that i mean our cult would be cool yeah it'd be a raccoon dumpster great yeah so much booze and weed like midsummer do they have have (laughs) (laughs) midsummer no not like that beatrice not like that at all I just watched that the other day. It was really good. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Yeah. It's pretty disturbing. Um, yeah. Do they have legal weed in North Carolina? I don't know. Do they? I, don't I know. think there are red states. Maybe Probably we're not. coming to North Carolina. Maybe we are. Yeah. So that's all the gossip that I have. Wow. So let's now get into season five, episode one of Sister Wives entitled Polygamist Debt Threat. Debt. Debt. I was going to say death threat. <laughs> <laughs> I got myself. Not death threat. Debt threat. Debt threat. <laughs> threat yes this is a good this was pretty good we got into some coin information and you know that's what we love Mm -hmm. i eat it up so good on it it's so tasty yes so if you guys recall from season four everybody's trying to get the cul-de-sac homes and it was in question of whether or not they were going to qualify for financing and so this episode is kind of all about that they've been trying to clean up their debt namely robin and Janelle, apparently, but and namely Janelle. Robin. It's mainly Robin. Yeah. Um, and trying, getting everything in sorted in order before they qualify for financing. Right, a pre-approval. So not even your final qualification. It's the pre-approval. Yeah. And everybody's worried about it. Yeah. Because Robin's got some big debts because she chose to make peace. When she left Preston, her first husband. Whatever. And so she agreed to take all of the debt just so that she could get out of the marriage and walk away free and clear. Doubt. But she then proceeded not to pay any of those debts (laughs) that she took on herself for peace, (laughs) which is interesting. Yeah. And so now she is on a quest to get her credit rating up Uh to 600. Yeah. So it must have been in the shitter. That's bad. Yeah, it that's must have been bad. really in the shitter. She's got credit in the fives. Oh, if that. What's your credit at? It's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty I've good credit. excellent credit. Me actually. too. Excellent credit. Me and your daughter both have excellent credit. That's good. Keep it that way. Yeah. But Janelle and Robin, they don't got good credit, honey. No, they don't. But Janelle's got kind of a raise in because she's paying for this whole ass family. Well, and she probably declared bankruptcy. Probably. And it's probably existing yeah. in that record, too, because totally. I think it's on your record for like 10 years or something, something like, like that. that. Seven yeah. to 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. But we begin this episode with Christine talking about how she's now having to be in charge of her bills. She's paying all of her bills because Janelle used to do them. So yeah. now she has to do it. Which is interesting. It is interesting. And I was wondering why they were inserting this particular scene because she's at her little desk and she's writing checks and she's talking about how she's just so bad at it and she never really had to take care of herself. But because she has her own house in Vegas now, she's got to be an adult. Yeah. I'm like, Christine, get yourself together. Yeah. But we, it kind of makes sense later in the episode when we get to the pre-approval process. Yeah, because it's totally a producer yeah. thing. Trying to get everybody to be like, oh, are any of these wives going to qualify? Oh, no. But we know yeah. what the end is. Yes. And then we have Robin visiting her lawyer, mm-hmm. talking about her credit report and how it needs to be fixed right and so the lawyer is taking a look and she's like yeah this is bad yeah you've only got 30 days to bring it up to the level where you can pre-qualify for these loans and maybe if we send you off to a debt specialist maybe they can help you work with some of this maybe not all of it but maybe we can fix some of it yeah Big yikes. Yes. And then we have Janelle visiting a model home because she's trying to see where she can cut costs. Right. Because, of course, Janelle's the only one that has to sacrifice her right. wants and her needs, even though she's got a big ass family. But Mary has to have her wet bar and her deck. So. Well, I appreciated this because Janelle is starting to get into the history of the family. Mm-hmm. And she says that historically it's been her and Cody that have been the breadwinners for the family. Mm-hmm. And it has been difficult in the past when she's the one out there 
generating all of the money to pay for the household stuff to then have some wives and she does name Mary Mm -hmm. like then say oh I want to buy this or oh I'm going to get that because out of Janelle's wages Mary gets an equal portion which has got to hurt if you've got six kids of your own Mm -hmm. Mary's got one kid and Mary's like give me my share yeah give me my portion Mm -hmm. I deserve it I can see how that would start to chap Janelle's hide. Oh, that would make me so bitter. And I don't know how Janelle has bit her tongue for all of these years and just kind of rolled over and dealt with it. I'm sure this is why Janelle and Mary had a lot of conflict early on in their relationship when they came on as wives. I'm sure that's why they hated each other for a lot of years because Janelle had this animosity. And then Christine comes in and has all these kids herself. And so she's having to, you know, support Christine and Mary and Mary's expensive ass taste. And like I said last episode, I get it. We shouldn't be having Mary live in a fucking shack with Leon and just be like, yeah, because you only had one kid, you don't get all this resources. I understand. But you, I don't know if you should be getting equal in terms of like you get a big giant house and all of this stuff. Well, and let's go back to Lehi. Like, why is Janelle generating the majority of the income for the family and then doing all of the record keeping? Uh-huh. All of the bill paying. What the fuck? Managing the finances. Mary, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, bro- Mary, why aren't you working yeah. and earning a wage equal, if not better, than what Janelle does? Because Janelle's got six kids. You've got this one child. The child presumably at some point gets into school. Yeah. So you got all this time. And I know that Mary did have a job. I think she worked with like a disadvantage. Like part-time though, right? I thought it was a part-time job. Like, why isn't Mary working? Is this part of the whole, I'm the first wife, I don't have to work, but I get the lion's share. Mm. I don't know. I'm just making presumptions. But if I were Mary, especially, and I said this last week, I would be making sure I'm contributing at a level that entitles me to take the fair share or yeah. an equal share. Because if I'm not, I feel bad about myself. Exactly. And if Janelle's coming to me and saying, my kids need to eat and I need to make sure we have money so all of our kids can eat. If I was married, I'd be like, cool, I don't need all of this shit then. Get me a one bedroom, whatever, and I will deal with it for a bit while we get our finances in order and it'll be fine. Because Janelle literally says, these were times where Mary was demanding all of this shit that she felt like she was owed with no income that she's bringing in, when their finances were, quote, desperate. This is when they first got to Vegas. I mean... So when they first got to Vegas, their finances, we assume, were were bad. Terrible. And so when Mary is saying, well, I want a house with three bedrooms and two baths, and I want to have a pool, and I deserve it, this is what gets Janelle mad. But I'm going all the way back to Lehigh. That's though. what I'm saying, yeah. Like in Lehigh, though, what was Mary doing? Why yeah. weren't you working full time? Why weren't you getting a, an education so that you could have a job at a level that you could support this whole fucking family? Because mm-hmm. you only have one kid and that kid is in school. So why aren't you shouldering that burden when Janelle has six kids? I mean... At, at least do the fucking finances. At least do the budget. And help if with you it. see that Janelle's kids are hungry or that she's just trying to put together like meals to right. feed her kids... Kick in some grocery money. It's just you and Leon. I like, know. Now I get it. Everybody's upset at Mary. And <sighs> a whole lot of people don't like Mary. And yeah. we're going to get to the wet bar and we're going to get even angrier. Uh-huh. But I can 100% identify with Janelle here. Oh, for sure. And Janelle, while she's doing all this bookkeeping now in this episode, and she's talking about their history, and she's like, now I understand because last on the season finale, this was the first time Mary really verbalized her feelings about it and she doesn't want to feel penalized i totally understand her perspective you know i'm just stressed and i'm dealing with a lot and then she talks about i wonder what would happen if i just ran away Mm -hmm. and left everything and i'm like yeah yikes i feel really bad for her but she's so self-sacrificing that she's willing to do this for her family because she loves them and she has a responsibility to them Mm -hmm. she has all these kids and she's helping raise christine and lee christine's kids and leon so like i get it but but consider this scene she's going with mona into the model house to try and find things that she can cut out of her her house so she's like maybe i don't need a dining room 
even though she has six children. That's sad. Like maybe we could all just have an eat in kitchen Ugh. because she's trying to cut corners because she's trying to make that money stretch. Meanwhile, we've got Mary over her, here in her 4,000 square foot home who's thinking about decks and, and pools wet bars. and wet bars. And so it isn't fair. And no. she says this in the episode. So it's like fundamentally unfair. Yep. But them's uh, them's the breaks. Yep. And this is we've decided a long time ago that we should all have equal shares. And so that's what it is. Well, and now at this point, it's just in Janelle's income, right? Because Cody's not working unless he's doing his weird MLM. I think they're doing network marketing. That's, that's why he said has the, his yeah. his little Lexus and his sports Correct. car. Correct. Yes. <laughs> but I don't think he's like making a lot of money. It doesn't I seem. don't know. And then let's be honest. They have TLC and whatever money they're making. Right. And they're starting to make more money, which yep. is probably what gives them the leverage to buy the homes. Yep in this season so the financial landscape is shifting i think janelle doesn't need to be so intense about it because the money is starting to come in right but i could see how she was intense in lehigh oh i can sure. see how she was intense when they moved to vegas i can see why her kids were like why does mary get all this and we don't even have food what's mm -hmm. up like what the fuck mm -hmm. i would be turning heads i would be so pissed if i was janelle i don't know how she's i think so janelle cool. was i think janelle was pissed Ooh. so she's probably telling cody and remember cody just one year previous melted down his wedding ring to mary so he's angry too that's yep. a very angry and symbolic thing to do so right. i think a lot of people are actually mad at mary mm. and i think she's going to make it even worse for herself as we continue on in the cul-de-sac <sighs> journey i can't wait till we get to the wet bar conversation oh good stuff. my god and then we kind of shift gears in the episode and we have a photo shoot for my sister wife's closet oh my God, I don't care. and it was really cringy because cody is trying to fight whether or not he should be in the photos right he's like well this is for sister wives or for women like the jewelry is all for women like why am i standing in the middle of this picture and what i thought was interesting was how christine just snapped at him uh-huh she's just like i don't care i'm sweating just get in the photos we already <laughs> agreed but you could really kind of get a snapshot of the kind of nagging and sniping that christine probably does to cody when they're alone which is contributing to him not really wanting to spend a whole lot of time with her like she was kind of mean about it sure but on the flip side why are we having this discussion in front of the photographer that you booked for this photo shoot mm -hmm. like if you're trying to change your mind midway through the photo shoot and trying to discuss this stuff this is a photographer's valuable time right like you don't need to be having this discussion just take the fucking photos and you'll decide later like i'm totally yeah like christine but i'm also <laughs> like aries moon i'm yeah. i'm kind of fiery <laughs> I'm just right like can we get this shit together yeah it's just like we don't really need to have this conversation no. we can take some with and some without just get it on but i also thought it was kind of weird how he didn't want to be associated with like all four of the women he's like i don't want to look like i'm some pimp or i don't want to look like i'm some woman yeah <laughs> i'm not one of the women i'm a man i'm not gay <laughs> yeah and christine's like well behind every woman there with a website there's the man I'm yeah like, no, not really. I've got my own website and there's no fucking right. man behind that. Like, what are you talking about, Christine? She's such a toddler. She, she is. really is so emotionally immature. She's dumb. One thing I noticed in this particular segment was when they were on the couch talking about my sister wife's closet mm -hmm. and the photo shoot. This is when Janelle says, and yeah, when it comes to fundamental fitness, which is her idea for a gym, which she really wants to do, mm -hmm. she says, we've decided to put that on the back burner because the costs, the overhead were just too much. And then Robin pop pipes in and says, yeah, like my sister wife's closet is all online so we can afford it. Mm -hmm. So you can see how just in the last few months... Janelle has had to forsake her dream for again. Robins. Yeah, yeah again. A, a constantly sacrificing yeah. for this family and just rolling over and dealing with it because she's not strong enough within herself to be like, no, I want to do fundamental fitness. Yeah, well, it does cost a lot of money and sure, it is a dumb but, idea though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't cost that much if they weren't having to pay for all of these homes. True. You know what I mean? Yes. Like it, they probably could afford it at this yeah. time. But they've got but, that sweet, sweet check from TLC. So Yep. And we have to do my sister wife's closet because it's going to be such a booming business. It's going to be a success, Beatrice. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Hearts on hearts on hearts. It's so good. 
ball sack hearts. That's right. And then we have some weird scene with Maddie talking about how she doesn't want to be a polygamist. And yeah. she's like not drinking. She's going out on the strip and they're doing that flying through the air thing that yeah. you can do in Vegas. And she's got two friends who are pretty wholesome mm-hmm. and they're not drunks. Yeah. And so they're not messy girls. And so she enjoys having authentic friends. And I don't care. I don't care either. The most important part was those girlfriends asking her whether she would ever be a polygamist. And she's like, absolutely not. Fuck I no. would not share my man. Never. She's like, out of all of us, it would be Leon. Yeah. Leon's the one who might do that. But she also says that Cody and Janelle give them the freedom to select their own belief, their own faith, their own religion. Yeah. Which is awesome. That's like the one thing that the Browns did right, I yep. guess, is gave their kids that freedom. And then we have a weird segment at Robin's house where we meet her sister. For the first time. Tara Lise or something. Tara Lise. And she apparently babysits her kids, which I thought was fucking weird because I'm like, you have these sister wives. Yeah. Why can't Christine mm-hmm. or Mary watch your kids? Do you not trust them to watch your kids? Do they not want to, though? Mm, Maybe. I don't like, know. Mary, you want to be such an ingrained member of this family with equal resources and equal stake. Why aren't you helping with Robin's children? Maybe Robin doesn't want her to. Maybe Mary doesn't want to. But Tara Lise is actually living with Robin. Uh-huh. And Robin says, if we get these houses, Tara Lise is going to move and she's going to live with me there. And I think. Tara Lise is the nanny, right? I guess. Of what does the nanny do fame? Well, no, I think that's a, another man, nanny that they hire. But I think that Tara is still involved in their family. I feel like and there was her? a photograph of her in a minivan with the kids or something driving them around. I think Tara is still involved. You that's guys so weird. Correct me. Yeah, let I'm us wrong. know in the comments. Let us know, yeah. But I just think it's weird because I could see a world where, where Mary's like, no, I'm too busy. I yeah. can't watch your kids. But Christine, I feel like would be totally fine to do that. Right. And we learn in later episodes, like in the last few seasons, mm-hmm. Christine's like, well, she never wanted me to help. She never wanted her children why? around me. So, yeah. That's weird. Well, why do you think? Because Robin hates Christine. I don't think Robin likes any of them. No. I don't think Robin wants to integrate not one bit. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. She wants her own home and to fuck Cody. So why do you need a nanny, though? Like, I could understand if you told me, yeah, my younger sister needs a place to stay. And so I figured she could stay with me. Uh, You know, Cody's not here every night. Like, I see him once every four nights. And so we hang out and she helps me with my kids versus she's my nanny. Yeah. Why why do you need a nanny? Well, Cody and Robin are dating and fucking. So they need time to do that. I guess so. Without the kids. And then we have Cody and Robin going to a debt specialist to talk about all of her debt. The Victoria's Secret bullshit. Which was interesting. Mm -hmm. We have the debt specialist who's putting on a performance for his company. But he's like, yes, this particular debt is in collections. It's $4,000. Yikes. You cannot have anything in collections over $1,000 or else you are not going to get a home loan. But we were able to resolve this for you. Mm -hmm. Come and visit my company. Yes. What I found interesting, though, was the subsequent conversation that Robin has with Cody on the couch in which she talks about how it was that she inherited inherited this debt from the marriage um, and she says that she just wanted to have peace she wanted to get out of the marriage and so she took the debt she lived with her mother mm-hmm. after that for like nine months until she could get her own apartment robin says she was a working single mother and she didn't have one cent one dollar to put toward any of the debt or the collections so then why'd you take them though yeah why did you agree to take them there must have been another reason you had to take them maybe it's because it was your victoria's secret card i Uh don't know maybe it was your own debt from your shopping problem that you have i don't know that's just a guess but then i wondered to myself beatrice okay say that's all true That's 2008 when you got divorced and then you didn't pay it. And now we're in 2013 or 2012, 14, Uh whatever year it is. You've been on this show for four seasons. Uh We are in our fifth season. You couldn't have been paying it at all. Paying any of these bills that are in collections. Well, no, because she's not working. Because Janelle's having to scrape by. Well, how is she making a five thousand dollar earnest money payment? I don't know because it's Janelle's money. It's not her money. It doesn't come from her account. And that's the other thing. If you're living with your mom for nine months after the divorce and you're saving money, why aren't you putting any money down to pay your debt off? Because when my parents got divorced, my dad had to go live back at home. Mm -hmm. He lived with his grandma Mm -hmm. and he was paying shit off because he was broke. Right. I mean, hello. And when my stepdad 
got divorced from his wife, he assumed all of the debt to keep the peace, to actually keep the peace, because his mm-hmm. ex-wife was fucking insane. And it was like hundreds of grand, hundred, I think it was like 130 grand of debt. Holy it was shit. bad. Yeah. But he had to pay it. There was no way he could avoid it. So we were scraping by for a while because he was having to pay off this debt. But he wasn't letting it go into collections. Listen, I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt that as a single mother with three children, even living with her mother, like eking out a living, working wherever you're working with no education, like it's not a lot of money. You got to feed your kids and put clothes on their bodies. Of course. Like maybe you can't make those extra payments. But by the time you run into the Browns, Uh you know, and you're wearing these nice clothes, you're wearing these nice shoes. Diesel jeans. Like she wears... High quality clothes she does. in season 17, 16, mm-hmm. 18. Like she has, a, if anybody has expensive taste, it's actually Robin. Totally. In her McMansion. Yeah. Why weren't you paying these bills? Are you trying to fuck over Preston, your ex-husband? Or are you just one of those people that you say you're ashamed to be associated with? Ah. She's like, I'm, you know, I don't like the stigma of people who are in collections. And I have a lot of shame because people just think you're lazy. Mm. And I'm like, huh, that's an interesting statement. Were you? Yeah. Why haven't you made any payments toward any of this in the last two and a half years you could have even a hundred dollars a month you could have paid that off oh for sure yeah and you could have done debt consolidation way sooner a long time ago like they can do that it's not that it's not that hard but i don't know something shady about all of that i think she's totally lying i think it's totally it was all of her victoria's secret debt yes she just didn't want to deal with it and i think maybe i dare say one of the sister wives was calling her lazy for being in collections. Ooh. I wonder if Janelle was like, Ooh. you're a lazy ass bitch. Maybe Christine. Mm, I don't know. It. I know I'm calling her I'm lazy. I'm calling lazy. Retroactively lazy because I mean, that doesn't make any sense. To it me. doesn't make any sense either. Because you have extra money. You're living yep. in a nice house. You have a fucking nanny. Yep. You could have been paying these debts. I don't understand you. Yep. Or you could have done debt consolidation yep. way sooner. Or you could have taken out a personal loan and can tell. There's a lot of ways that 100%. you can get rid of it. It, instead of just letting it go to collections for four years. But do you see how invested she is in telling the lawyer, the debt specialist, and then everybody from the couch how she did this as a sacrifice yeah, so that I could the keep peace. the peace and I could leave because we were living in terrible conditions. Uh-huh. I don't buy a bit of that. I'm sure you were living, you know, in poverty, probably. Sure. I'm sure you and your husband at the time weren't making a lot of money. I'm sure yep. that's true, but I'm not buying this bullshit from you. Well, and then the other thing with the debt consolidator was saying was that um, you're a ghost. You don't have good credit because you had three different last names in the mm-hmm. last few years. Why did you have that? And she's like, oh, that was like an accident. I didn't know. So oh. Sullivan, because she introduces herself as Robin Sullivan to the debt specialist. Yes. I don't know if she's associated with Robin Brown at this time, Mm -hmm. but she's probably um, associating with Preston's last name. And why am I? I can't remember. I'm blanking on what it is. I don't care. I know what it is. But so what is the other name? Because Sullivan's her stepfather. Maybe her first name is her biological father. And I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And we're just talking out of our ass. We don't know. Well, what we're talking about and she's trying to say that i wasn't trying to evade anything i wasn't trying to run away from anything with mm. those three last names mm. why are you saying that then honey yeah i think you were it's a little sketch i'm a little so out. Thing. it's a little sketch liar and then we have leon who is being inaugurated in the national honor society at their high school and, and that is amazing i want to say i was in the national honor society <gasps> were you and i graduated top 10 percent of my class oh my god i'm so proud of you yeah. Yeah, I was pretty high up in the National That's Society. That's awesome. Yeah, that was smart. I uh. barely graduated. The <laughs> only reason I graduated is because my math teacher decided to give me a passing grade, even though I didn't earn it. That's I was amazing. so dumb. But you're I like so, so intelligent, dumb. though. All self-taught after uh, the fact. That's great. I was super dumb in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking dumb. I was from Hawaii Public Schools. Yeah. I would rather be at the beach. For sure. Or smoking doobies. Smoking a doobie. Yeah. Yes. And getting kissed a little maybe a little yeah so leon gets inaugurated or Mm -hmm. inducted or whatever the right term (laughs) is and then we have the scene of leon cody and and, uh mary on Mm -hmm. the couch yeah this was wild it was a little weird yeah well because i mean let's keep in mind leon's like i don't know 15 yeah something 14 15 so they're a teenager they're being dumb they're moody so it's whatever but they kind of talk about 
Mary having kids. Well, Mary's talking about Leon going off to college in Utah right. because it's very important for Leon to go to university in Utah so that they can be around other Mormons. Uh-huh. Leon is very indoctrinated at this time in the cult. Yep. And so Mary is talking about how sad she's going to be when Leon finally goes to college because she's going to be an empty nester. And that segues us into this conversation with Leon starting to cry because as Leon says it, they pray every single night that Mary would have another another baby baby so that she wouldn't have an empty house. Additionally, Leon goes on to say that they think Mary should take Robin up on her surrogacy offer Because if Mary doesn't, it's taking away from the rest of the family. Yeah, which was wild. I just stop, rewind that shit, and play it again. The audacity. Because at first, I'm like, oh, this is kind of sweet. The sentiment. Leon cares about their mother. Leon wants Mary to be happy. But then when Leon says, if you don't do this, you're taking away from the rest of us. You're doing damage to the family, putting this additional fucking pressure on Mary to either have Robin carry her child, do the IVF or have another baby with Cody. I'm like, wow. That was wild. To me, it gave like this feeling of like Leon's obviously upset and bitter about being an only child. And that's like a very real valid thing. I think a lot of only children feel where they're like, why didn't I have siblings? Or like, I wish I had siblings. Not every only child feels like that. A lot of only children are like, cool. I'm yeah. glad that I'm the favorite. I'm glad I'm spoiled. That's totally fine. But that's where, that's what I was kind of getting at with this whole conversation. Like Leon's a teenager. They're moody. They're dumb. Okay. Okay. But they're also probably just like bitter and sad that they didn't get to have like little siblings in the house all the time with them. No, but then you had all the little siblings from Janelle and Christine. Right, so which in the moment, Leon says, those are my real siblings. Exactly, so stop but being bitter. why are you additionally adding this weird pressure onto Mary and making her feel guilty for not having children? Teenagers. And this kind of begins our journey. And I, I'm always annoyed with Leon. Yeah. I'm annoyed with McKelty, but I'm equally as annoyed with Leon and from what I remember because again I say unto you I picked up this whole series this franchise during the catfish era and the way Leon treated Mary during that era I mean although although Mary was fucking full of shit and she wasn't admitting what she did wrong Leon was terrible to Mary and I think that was for a few seasons that Leon was terrible to Mary and I think we're just starting that arc but it was a really shitty thing to say in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And I, I I think in this moment, it's just totally indicative of teenagehood. And we're all bitches to, their, to our parents. I mean, I'm sorry. But that's just what teenagehood is. I was a bitch to my mom. Yeah, I, I don't know. But like, I, I was don't a total think bitch. my daughter would have said that to me. Like if she knew that was a pain point for me well, and that I really wish I could have had children and that I was worried that I was going to be alone. I don't think she would have said, well, if you don't do this thing, you're taking away from me and the rest of the family. Like I think she would have had my back. I think should have been, but mom, I'll come back on the weekends. I love you. You can call me anytime. Well, but your daughter wasn't spoiled like Leon, I think, is. Mm-hmm. And I think Leon kind of has an attitude because of that, especially in these later seasons we see. I'm like, Ugh, yikes. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like the difference. Like your daughter was well-rounded for the most part. I well, mean, and I know she, she was loved me and she didn't want me to be hurt. Exactly. And yeah. so like what Leon says in this moment is hurtful and totally, it causes yeah. Mary to actually cry and say again, she does not know what she wants and she feels pressure and I felt bad for her even though I don't like Mary well but I will say though I was a bitch <laughs> yeah. and I when I was a teenager I said some really hurtful fucked up shit to my mom like stuff that I knew would hurt my mom and I look back on those moments and I'm like I really regret that but I also know I was 14 and yes, going through a course. lot and there's a lot of change and that's the other thing too like these kids were moved from their homes and they're mm-hmm. teenagers, so like they're still dealing with all of that emotionally, and so they're probably lashing out a lot. Like we saw that with Hunter when they moved to Vegas, and he was right. being a total dick. Yes. So it's like, I'm kind of looking at it like that. I'm not excusing Leon's behavior, mm-hmm. but it's like it was just like I've such an there. unfortunate dig at Mary. Totally, yeah. it didn't need to happen. It was but not necessary anyway, especially when Mary loves Leon so much. Yes. Like, come on. But whatever. And then last but not least, we have the adults meeting with Mona mm-hmm. to see if they're going to all qualify for the homes. 
which was a uh, obvious producer fake out. Totally. The producers clearly told Mona to kind of set the stage and she does this by she saying, does. "Well, we never really discussed what would happen if three of you qualified and one of you didn't." <gasps> And, you know, Robin is immediately nervous because yeah. she was the one who was having such a problem with her credit. Although Janelle was too, but we didn't really hear much about that. Yeah. But ultimately, we learned that, ta-da, they all qualified. Robin qualified. So they all are, well, they're pre-qualified. Yeah, So exactly. they have to keep their shit together. And right. it's funny because in this moment, Christine's like, yeah, I forgot to pay my water bill already. <laughs> and oh my God, I forgot to pay these bills. And it's totally me. And if we don't get this house, it's my it's fault. It's my fault, yeah. And I'm just like, Christine, why aren't it's you paying that. your water bill? Though? I know, because she forgot about it. I'm like, how do you forget about that? But whatever. Yep. If she hasn't been paying all of her bills this whole entire time, it's right. just been Janelle. But so. they've been there a year. Yeah, right. So I don't understand. Get it together. Yep. All You're of a you, full grown person. All of these adults are the worst besides Janelle, like in terms of like responsibilities and like actually doing adult things. Yes. I feel like Janelle pays attention to the practicalities of life. Because and, if she doesn't, nobody else will. And exactly. everything will fall apart. I don't think she wants to necessarily. It's just. It is a skill that is born out of necessity because right. if she doesn't, these dumb ass browns are going to fall apart. Oh, that's the worst what place pressure. to be in. Can you imagine the pressure she was feeling one year previous when oh Mary's like, I want to pool and she's like how can i buy enough rice to feed my kids oh my god that's where i would have left i'd be like i'm taking all my kids i'm gonna go back home and live with my parents and may i remind you that she did that one before once before she left she did. her asses yep. because of their bullshit and she moved back to wyoming or whatever or yep i don't know where and she, she probably from. didn't do that because she loved christine and christine's kids and leon like she probably loved all of these kids so she couldn't just sit there and abandon them because mm -hmm they're taking advantage of her financially but then you're stuck in this position of always being taken advantage yep. of all the way up until season 18 yep she's been that way well and at the end of season 18 you're the only wife who's got nothing no assets janelle for all of your work and all of your record keeping you for all of your information knowing everything about this family you did not secure your position in this family now thank god you were able to purchase a home mm -hmm. in north carolina or not a home but a piece of property maybe you can build a home maybe you're going to build your flower business which yeah. i think she's interested in doing and i i wish you the best but like for all of your skills you should have set yourself up a little bit better honey. oh god Yikes. i would be so fucking bitter and so mad like out of all the people that are pa like posting passive aggressively on instagram it's just christine i'm like i wish mm -hmm. i wish janelle would just drag cody and robin for all their worth for how mm -hmm. she's been taken advantage of and financially abused in the tell-all she kind of did she a didn't go bit, all but I want more. she didn't like fire and brimstone their asses more. but she swore she called out Br counselor robin Ugh. she did reveal some things but i need more as well and um, I don't want to take it. This seems declassé, but I'm going to do it anyway because I am in a dumpster. But like if she got the full beneficiary, $500,000, like I'm really happy if that happened that yeah. Garrison was able to do that for her because again, she was the last wife left she with nothing. It. And that is just such a precious gift. Yeah. Especially if Cody didn't get any of it. Oh my God, please. I hope. Cody didn't get any of it. Fuck you. Cody didn't get any of it. I feel like a piece of shit talking about his life insurance, though. So let's Sorry. move on. And I have no idea of the, the veracity yeah, of any know. of these statements. So yeah. let it not go unsaid. Don't come for us. Is that it? That's it. That's the end of the episode. Well, do we have anything else that we want to say to these beautiful records before we get up on out of here? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star ah! review. It really helps us grow the pod. We really appreciate it. So thank you so much. We will be back later this week to talk about Welcome to Plathville. Oh, now, honey, if lit. you haven't heard our breakdown of the first oh episode God. last week, you want to get into that you really and do. listen to it because it sets up the rest of the season and we are so excited to share that with you so yeah. make sure to come back for that and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out bye bye guys <laughs>